Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and here is your detailed forecast update for April 15th, 2025. A lot to get through today, starting things off up at north where we've got Tropical Low 29U developing offshore from northwest Western Australia. This system here is being really slow to develop, and quite honestly, it has been a nuisance to track and be able to forecast, but the system here finally looks like it is beginning to get itself going, just offshore from the Kimberley coastline, tracking out towards the west at this point in time. This system is no longer a significant threat, or it hasn't been a significant threat to the West Australia. Australian coastline for a good couple of days now, but it's no longer a reasonable threat to the West Australian coastline, and I think we can put all worries we've once had about this storm to bed at this point in time. It was never going to be a significant tropical cyclone. We're still expecting it to intensify quite substantially over the next couple of days, and you can see that the storm over the last 12 hours has really got its act together. It's now swirling around as you would expect a full-blown tropical low or even a tropical cyclone to be doing, uh, and it is still a really small tropical cyclone in a rather favourable environment, so the system does have the opportunity to too rapidly intensify throughout the next couple of days, with conditions may remaining extremely favourable for this tropical cyclone until about Thursday. But as you can see on the forecast modelling here, once this system does get itself going and heads further out to see those conditions do rapidly become a little bit more hostile here. Uh, out towards Wednesday, conditions are remaining good, but then Thursday, once this system is well offshore from the West Australian coastline, beginning to make that U-turn back towards Western Australia, the conditions are going to get really nasty and wind shear should rip apart this system from Thursday night and into Friday morning. Most major forecast runs suggest that this tropical cyclone will fall apart through Friday and into Saturday before either a landfall or U turns just before it makes that landfall on the Kimberley coastline, somewhere between Broome and Koori Bay. So Derby could be in the firing line once again. It'll be interesting to see what this system does. It is expected to be in close proximity to the WA coastline as a tropical low, so heavy rainfall is still a possibility. But at this point in time, we're not expecting tropical cyclone force winds to extend across locations between Broome up to Derby or Broome and further north of those locations there. It is still that rain threat, as I have been mentioning for the last couple of minutes. The rain isn't going to be a significant problem from this tropical cycling, considering it is expected to fall apart pretty much right upon uh, its expected, I guess, quote-unquote, landfall. You can see, because it is going to be a small system, the rain core in this system is going to be really concentrated and, for, to be honest, quite isolated for, uh, for some locations. So with extreme rainfall accumulations expected around the centre of the storm, up to 350 millimetres and slightly more than that possible, once this is system does fall apart, those accumulations will drop off substantially, but we're not writing off rainfall accumulations up around the triple figures widespread between Broome up to Columbaroo and to some heavier force around the 200 to 250 millimetre mark around Derby. Again, this is tropical areas, so they can cope with 250 millimetres of rainfall. If we were talking about more rainfall than this, it would be problematic, but I reckon tropical low 29U, which is likely to become tropical cyclone aerial in the next 24 hours, is not going to be a problematic system for the Kimberley, and they can breathe a, well, there's never going to be a heavy sigh of relief, but they can breathe a sigh of relief up there. This system expected to head offshore, intensify substantially before getting crumbled and crushed by wind shear through Thursday and Friday, and then falling apart as it approaches the WA coastline through Saturday and into Sunday. A wet Easter, though, for the Kimberley region, showers and thunderstorms widespread, especially across the uh, western half, but other than, uh, other than that, for Western Australia, looking high and dry for the most part. No real rainfall on the cards for the remainder of Western Australia through Easter. Over into the Gulf of Carpentary, we do have have another tropical cyclone in the making up there. The Bureau of Meteorology giving it a moderate chance of development in the next 24, uh, not 24 hours, in the next seven days rather. I'm getting completely boggled on my time frames, but you can see a tropical low which has been tagged 30U is beginning to develop here on the radar on the satellite imagery and we do have a little bit of rotation now starting to organise itself. We've been talking about this system for the last couple of days and it hasn't really changed much from yesterday. The forecast or the currents uh, on this system here, it really does look very similar to how it did yesterday and also the forecast trajectory of this tropical cyclone and the expected intensity that it will reach is not changing much as well over the last couple of days. The system is wrapping itself up though and convection now beginning to build around the centre so it is probably a step closer to development into a full-blown tropical low or tropical cyclone and the chances of tropical cyclone status they're now actually becoming a little bit more robust for this system over the next couple of days. The conditions in the Gulf of Carpentaria right now are very favourable for this system so it's going to follow a stalling motion throughout the next 24 hours before getting its act together on Wednesday and into Thursday, in fact, getting its act together on Thursday by the looks of things before finally moving towards the southeast on Thursday and into Friday, entering the Gulf of Carpentaria through Friday and then intensifying substantially through Friday and into Saturday and likely to attain Category 1 or even low-end Category 2 strength tropical cyclone status as it approaches the western uh, coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria on the Queensland side of things, the western Cape York coast, uh, where a landfall or very close pass to Weeper and Oricon can be uh, expected as a possibility through Saturday or into Sunday. The system is 
is then expected to be dragged off by the steering currents through Sunday and into Monday and weakened substantially before approaching Cape West and Nullanby. And you can see as it moves across the to uh, top end of the Northern Territory and into the Timor Sea, it's just remnant low, uh, which does exist for a rather long amount of time. You can see the remnants traceable right out to the end of the forecast modeling here, probably right out to the start of May. So the system, whilst it is going to be a really short-lived tropical cyclone, if it ever gets there on Saturday and Sunday this coming weekend, the remnants of the system and the thunderstorms associated with this system could kick around for a week after the system finally perishes. Interesting stuff. Let's talk about impacts of the Cape York Peninsula. Rainfall accumulation is certainly the main threat at this point in time. They're no stranger to tropical cyclones, but considering the system is likely to be suffering from wind shear uh, and quite, so suffering quite substantially from wind shear, which is why it never gets to a significant intensity and why it weakens so dramatically once it gets itself uh, south into the Gulf of Carpentaria through Saturday afternoon and into Sunday, you can see that rainfall is going to be quite isolated. The heavy falls are possible with accumulations of 200 millimeters possible around the south side of this system here, but I'm not expecting significant rainfall accumulations across the Cape York Peninsula with maximum falls up to 300 millimeters for Weeper and Oricon, and they'll probably occur over a 48 hour period. So they, again, they're no stranger to that type of rainfall up there, and that's not likely to cause significant problems. Rainfall as well won't, pen won't be penetrating too far south, and I'll get to far north Queensland in just a second, but rainfall normally is a problem when we do get tropical cyclones in the Gulf of Carpentaria up the far north Queensland, and this is kind of a rare case where rainfall is not going to be a problem for the Cassidy Coast or the Daintree Rainforest. The system here, and I think it shows when we take a look at the rainfall picture on this tropical cyclone, so this is what the radar imagery is expected to look like when this tropical cyclone is at the selected period of time, so through Easter Saturday and into Easter Sunday. There's hardly any convection to speak of here from this system. It's going to look very, very ragged and very naked, to be honest, through Saturday and into Sunday before the system heads back out into the Gulf of Carpentary. It picks up a little bit more convection by the looks of things, but yeah, once it gets itself over to the Gulf of Carpentary, the uh, eastern side of the Gulf of Carpentary, dry air and wind shear are going to have a massive impact on this system, and as such, it is going to look worse for wear, that's for sure. Also, just to note, those uh, that still were concerned about the tropical on the Gulf of, and in the Coral Sea, rather, that was expected to happen much later on into the forecast period. Uh, whilst that was never a hot chance of development, and there is still a very slim chance, and it does look like increased moisture is going to happen between the 25th and the 30th of April, as per major forecast model guidance at this point in time, the chance of a tropical low is pretty much all but dead, I would believe, at this point in time. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. You can see the GFS cooling for something in the Gulf of Carpentaria, and this looks like a more classic tropical low slash tropical cyclone that might have some more major ramifications to the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest, but it's guesswork beyond about the 25th of April and what we can expect rainfall and storm-wise over across the Cape York Peninsula, but definitely an increase in thunderstorm activity, which could lead to tropical low or tropical cyclone activity between the 25th to out to about the 30th of April is a possibility at this point in time. But again, I wouldn't be betting the farm on it at this point in time either. Interesting stuff and certainly something to be keeping us on our toes. Up in far north Queensland, though, just briefly, we will touch on it there. We have had a few showers overnight and they have had uh, a couple of good drops of rainfall into the Daintree Rainforest and some respectable showers now moving through the Daintree Rainforest at this point in time. Slow moving stuff as well. It's just this pesky weather that's coming out of the southeast and as such conditions rather unpleasant up into the Daintree Rainforest and also for the Casper Coast as well. More lines of showers expected to be developing throughout the remainder of today as well and we can be seeing showers are expected to continue continue through today, pick up a little bit on and later tonight, especially for the Daintree before clearing off tomorrow morning and then clearing out for the Easter long weekend pretty much entirely. You can see showers continuing and persisting through Thursday and into Friday, but for the most part for the Easter long weekend, it is looking high and dry. A few showers possible for the Casper Coast through Saturday and a couple of showers could be a bit more widespread through Sunday, but Monday looking dry, Tuesday looking dry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you get the picture of up in far north Queensland, definitely start to swing more towards the drier side of things with only a couple of decent drops of rainfall expected tonight into early tomorrow morning and then again through Saturday night and into Sunday morning for extreme far northern Queensland and the Cassidy Coast and the Daintree Rainforest. Interesting stuff, far north Queensland, nothing too much of a worry for me anymore in terms of rainfall. It doesn't look like they're going to be seeing anything significant, not at least for the next two weeks, but again I will be keeping close tabs on the rainfall that's going to come in in late April, early May. Not unheard of to hear rainfall uh, of a heavy magnitude at that time of the year, but again certainly something to be keeping close tabs on.
at this point in time. Now the Tasman Sea, I mean, this is just wild what we've got going on down there. We've got this low pressure system, a dramatic low pressure system that might actually be a tropical cyclone. Honestly, I haven't looked at the South Pacific right now. Yeah, it is a tropical cyclone. It's been designated as Tropical Cyclone 30 down here. It certainly looks really impressive, that's for sure. And you can see between major forecast models, they are expecting the system to intensify just a little bit more as it moves through the southern islands of Vanuatu before it gets swallowed up by a dramatically developing large tropical low towards the north of uh, the North Oak Island area through tomorrow morning. This system here engulfed in these systems kind of merge into two tropical uh, lows before becoming two low pressure systems. And then one low pressure system finally through Wednesday night into Thursday morning as this system swings down into the Tasman Sea. And this is going to be a violent storm, that's for sure. So this doesn't really affect New South Wales and Queensland that much. Uh, I will be getting to the details for New South Wales and Queensland in just a second, but I thought that this is definitely some interesting stuff that people are worth looking at for the Tasman Sea because it is going to have some impacts on the swell and also the temperatures over in New South Wales and Queensland. So stick around for the next few minutes while I explain this system. Strong winds whipping out of the northeast here, impacting the North Island of New Zealand. They could be seeing some really robust gusts through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. You can see areas like Auckland and Hamilton experiencing gusts averaging 70 to 80 kilometres an hour with stronger gusts up to 115 kilometres an hour on the extreme northern points of New Zealand. Again, I'm not strong with my New Zealand geography, so fill me in in the comments section down below. You can see winds also very strong on the southern side of the system here with peak gusts up to around 140 kilometres an hour. So this low pressure system, very strong indeed, and it intensifies through Thursday, going through a process that we call bomb cyclogenesis, and that's where a tropical, uh, a low pressure system, not a tropical low pressure system, but just a general low pressure system or an extra tropical cyclone intensifies extremely quickly. It's like rapid intensification for a tropical cyclone, but bomb cyclogenesis is the term that we generally speaking use for extra tropical cyclones. So whilst I'm not calling this a bomb cyclone, which I think is a throw off term that uh, meteorologists use in clickbait titles, this cyclone here is certainly a very significant one indeed and remaining strong through Thursday and into Friday, really spinning itself up dramatically. I mean, just have a look at how much stuff this is going to be spinning up out of the southeast before that high pressure ridge sweeps in over in the Great Australian Bight, really does build, then pushes the system through this weekend into New Zealand. It could be a strong one, that's for sure, for New Zealand as well, with some very significant winds persisting through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and some heavy rainfall expected into the Southern Alps and also across the Northern Ireland and the extreme northern points north of Hamilton and up towards Auckland. We could be seeing some heavy rainfall there through this weekend, especially through the start of the Easter long weekend, that's for sure. If we take a look at rainfall accumulations right now, just through uh, starting Thursday and then out towards the Easter long weekend, you can see some really significant rainfall accumulations expected to develop across the northern coast, averaging 100 millimetres with peak falls up around the 300 to 400 millimetre mark here. You can see up around Takaha, uh, rainfall accumulations approaching 400 millimetres, very significant stuff indeed. Significant falls also expected on the South Island, falls averaging between 100 up to about 150 millimetres of the Southern Alps, and falls, uh, I believe, just towards the Nelson area up around the 300 millimetre mark, uh, 300 millimeter mark there. Some significant falls are possible, that's for sure. I don't have a snow map at the go for me, but I do imagine there'd also be some snow from the system here on the Southern Alps. It is still early on in the season, but I would not be surprised if that happened. But yeah, impacts to the West, uh, not the West Australian coastline, for the East Australian coastline through New South Wales and Queensland, they are going to be very widespread. We're expecting some big time waves, especially through Friday and into Saturday. So it's going to be hazardous through Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday to be boating over in New South Wales and maybe even Southeast Queensland as well. Southeast Queensland should escape the brunt of it, but especially for New South Wales, Easter boating is going to be strongly advised against with these wind waves approaching three to five meters in height and swells also approaching the three to five meters in height there. Waves will ease off through Saturday and you can see they really do calm off through Saturday and into Sunday. So you might get some late Easter boating coming in, but it does look like a stronger low pressure system could begin to build later on into the forecast period through Monday and into Tuesday. So you're gonna have a really short window between Saturday night and into Sunday morning to get out and have a little bit of a boat or a fish if that's allowed over in New South Wales this time of the year. At this point in time, I wouldn't be looking too hopeful for it, but definitely some coastal hazard warnings can be expected through Thursday and into Friday from this very strong extra tropical low pressure system. But like I said, impacts don't really extend beyond that. You can see a few showers streaming up across the eastern coast of uh, New South Wales. Sydney could see some rather unpleasant weather continuing from today. A few showers continuing around the Sydney Newcastle area through today. Showers expected to continue from Wednesday night and into Thursday morning. And you can see showers also continuing through Thursday into Friday as this low pressure system continues to intensify over into the Tasman Sea. It will fall apart through Saturday and as such conditions will then begin to really dry off as a weak high pressure ridge begins to build across southeast Queensland and as such conditions becoming a lot calmer for the Easter period before 
low pressure returns and we might be seeing another strong uh, period of showers and storms driven up from the southeast through Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday for the New South Wales coastline, especially around the Sydney area. Rainfall is actually pretty widespread across Victoria and Tasmania as well. Sorry for cutting the Tasman Sea thing exceedingly short, but you can see rainfall really persistent there over the next seven days across parts of Victoria and into Tasmania. Showers are not robust over the next couple of days as they head out of one of their hottest April weekends on record, but we will be seeing a few showers and storms, uh, likely a few storms between Melbourne and Geelong tomorrow afternoon and evening. Conditions looking favourable for it, but the, after the dry weather over the next couple of days throughout this uh, working week, out towards this weekend, we can be expecting a return to showers and storms from Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then widespread showers through Sunday and into Monday across the southern half of Victoria and especially into the Gippsland region. Showers continuing through Tuesday morning before clearing off Tuesday afternoon, and it looks like a low pressure system is going to come through and bring some showers and some widespread showers and maybe even some snow to the higher peaks after about the 24th or the 25th of April. The whereabouts and the whenabouts of that is still a little bit uncertain at this point in time, but rainfall accumulations over the next 14 days now looking quite healthy for locations across Victoria and even parts of New South Wales as well. Showers will be adding to those rainfall accumulations quite nicely over the next 14 days. We could be seeing isolated falls between Sydney down towards Mallacoota up to 100 millimetres and then falls around the Sydney area up around the 60 millimetre mark and then north of Sydney up around the 70 to 80 millimetre mark north to Newcastle and then the widespread falls between 30 and 60 millimetres north along the New South Wales coastline up and towards southeast Queensland. Falls around the Victoria area as well widespread between uh, 10 to 25 millimetres with isolated falls heavier around the 50 millimetres and isolated falls into the Gippsland region up around the uh, 100 millimetre mark as well from showers and storms moving through there. Unfortunately still looking dry for South Australia until much later on into the forecast period the rainfall out there is still a little bit uncertain so I'm not going to make too much of a comment on it and Western Australia as well looking dry as well at least over the next week or so really nothing across the southwest corner of the state. A few showers have persisted overnight and you can see that front now moving into the goldfields region as well but that's the last of the rainfall and we're moving over in towards the southeastern corner of Western Australia rather it has already moved through the goldfields and we've got some low-lying cloud there which is bringing some cooler temperatures as well but yeah it was a cold morning that's for sure across the southwest. It wasn't especially cold in Perth but I think that the humidity is really making things feel a little bit cooler down there because it feels a lot colder than 14 degrees this morning and uh these temperatures are going to really quickly begin to drop and it's that time of the year the changeover between the warmer days and we can be seeing or expecting some cooler nights later on uh, this week and into early next week as well you can see temperatures really expected to plummet into low single digits as we get in towards this weekend seven degrees widespread through the week while pushing even lower than that up to or down to about six degrees into the collie area so temperatures now really beginning to cool down into the southwest corner of western australia with comparative temperatures actually into the high peaks of new south wales and victoria so wa this weekend could be some of the coldest places look have some of the coldest starts anywhere around australia anyways on that note that is all that i have time for this morning i thank everybody for watching the video to this point in time thank you so much for all of the support lately on the channel as well and subscribe if you haven't already any feedback or concerns leave them in the comment section down below as well but that is all for me today a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye